Cheers, everybody. Good afternoon. I want to hit you with a updated deck tech for Young Slimfoot, aka Slimefoot the Stowaway. It's an evolution of the deck tech I did about a year or two ago. One of the first deck techs I did for the channel because I, at the time, I was in love with Slimefoot. Slimefoot is one of my good decks. It's a deck I pull out when everybody else wants to take the power a little bit higher. And that's why I never play it. I hardly play it because unless everyone else is playing a good deck, I feel like a jerk when I win. And until recently, I played a couple of games where it did absolutely nothing. So I actually took it apart a little bit this week and did a little tinkering with it. Because on Saturday, I had fully committed to taking it apart. And my friend, uh, Swole Jesus, was like, you can't take that deck apart. You love it. And like, you know, you have a... Uh, altar for the commander. You're married to that deck. And I'm like, yeah, it really hasn't performed the last five, six times I played it, so I don't know, maybe it's just time to go. And let me tell you something. That deck heard me say I was going to take it apart, and it just flew out the gates. It was, I was drawn probably like 11 cards a turn at one point. It's a combo deck. It's not like a CDH deck where I have a bunch of tutors in it. I have one tutor in it and a bunch of raw draw power because I think like, I hate decks like my Cathro deck. I took it apart, it was a fun deck and a really high win percentage, uh, much to the chagrin of uh, Chris at Chicago Style Gaming who said that Commander was hot garbage, or he said it was he said it was terrible, he said it wasn't a good enough Commander, but that Commander was stupid. Like anything you can dump a bunch of counters on and make it have a bunch of keyword soup is gonna be really good. But much like my Locust got a deck. It played the same every time. It played the same every time. Every damn game I played, it was tutor for this and that and this and that. And that. Like, that's why I don't have that many tutors in Slimefoot. It's a combo deck and it's a strictly worse combo deck because I just use raw draw power to get to my combo. Whereas if I played more tutors, I could assemble the pieces a little bit easier. But then again, it would lead to more monotonous gameplay. But that's just me. I don't know. If you want to win, put tutors in. If you want to win, don't build it like this, but I had fun just like ripping through my deck. And um, it's a really cool deck. It's a it's a bit of a money sink. I'm not gonna front. I threw some money at this deck. Um, the beginning of all this nonsense, my boy Chris at Chicago Style Gaming gave me a great deal on a cradle. My boy Fog at Not Your Arch Meta came over and we did let's play we played Let's Make a Deal. And he said, how much cash you got? And I said, this. And he said, okay, I'll give you the buy for that. And I said, sold. So th the mana base is pretty spicy. But other than that, well, there's some other good-ass cards in there. So it's, it's a bit of a money sink, but it, for a long time, it was my favorite deck. And this is the natural progression of the deck. You know, how do you guys progress your decks? How do you guys validate spending good money on cardboard? How do you guys value the time versus the reward of playing a deck. Like I got one, two, 15 decks right now. I can, I hardly play this deck. One, because it's good and I feel like an asshole. If I beat, if I, you know, just molly -wop the table, and they're all looking at me like, oh, I know it's gonna be like this, and you know, but whatever. It's a great deck. Watching deck tech, enjoy guys. Cheers. All right guys, like I said, this is a, gonna be a deck tech for Young Slimfoot, aka Slimefoot the Stowaway. It's gonna be a one colorless, one black, one green for a legendary feature fungus. And it reads, whenever a sapling you control dies, Slimefoot the Stowaway deals one damage to each opponent and you gain a life. Tap four, create a sapling. And it's a two, three. And there is my sexy Slimfoot uh, altar I had by uh, Gustavo. I'll tag him in the description of the video. Gustavo, aka Billy Goat, the guy who lurks in our group chat and never comes to play, even though he lives two trains, two, no, let's, let's be honest. He lives four train stations away for me on the fastest train line in Chicago. We got 13 forests, of which we got some foils. Apparently that one's worth some money. Uh, we got a Grand Prix one given to me by my boys at uh, On The Stack. Where y'all at? Make some more videos, I miss y'all. And there we go, some more foils. Then we got 14 Swamparooskis. 
There we go. I'm trying to foil out because this is, again, this is a pet deck of mine. Here are the foil lands. I would really like to make all the lands foil just because I love this deck. It has always been a friend of mine. Apparently that is worth some money too. And then here come the non-basics. We got Phyrexian Tower, Bayou, Lanoir Wastes, Cradle, Command Tower, Temple of Milady, Overgrown, and under, Undergrowth Stadium. Again, like I said, this is the one and only deck I have where the land, one of the few decks I have that the land base, the mana base is quite spicy. And so here we are. All right, let's do the goons first, because it wouldn't be a Kevin W. Without goons. We got Tender Shroot. Tender Shroot Dryad is always going to be an all star in any deck. It's in the card is dumb, the card is fantastic. A little drink of my Irish. Um, yeah, you can't go on and on and on enough about Tender Shoot Drive. It's a fantastic card. It has Ascend. If you get 10 more permanents, you have City's Blessing. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a 1-1 Sap. And then if you have City's Blessing, they all get two twos. So it just makes it makes fodder. It makes Sapperlings. And, you know, I don't play Overrun, but in a deck that used Overrun... Well, I have one Overrun card, but... Um, in a deck that Overrun is more prevalent... This is a fantastic card. We've got another powerhouse. Sir Conrad, you know what he do. Species Specialist, when he comes into play, choose a creature type, whatever creature of the chosen type dies, draw a card. So we're gonna choose separately, because we're gonna be sacrificing those poor little plant boys, um, left, right, and center. Carrion Feeder, another cheap sack outlet. Viscera Seer, same biz. Yagi, um, again, sack outlets, pro proliferator, those things. And here's where the deck goes from being like a competitive CEDH deck to being a fun deck. Because I have two cards in here that I could easily slot, slot, slot out for more productive cards. We got my boy, Lord of the Pit. You can't have a deck with that that, need, that produces saps or small creatures, tokens, that doesn't have Lord of the Pit in it, in my opinion. I love me some Lord of the Pit. And then here we go again. We got Fallen Angel. You, saw, you swipe those two cards out for tutors, and this deck becomes infinitely more efficient. But that's not how I do. You got Young Dark Confidant, Spore Mound, making those saps, Skittles, doing some more um, Infect, and Blight Steel. Again, Infect. Ba -ba 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 -ba. All right. We got Damnation for a little board wipe action. We got Naturalize. Beast Within, and Relic Crush. That's the little removal package. We got a, probably a little bit light in it. I could probably put a Putrefy and any other number of, you know, spot removal cards and or board wipes in these colors, but it be what it is. We got two equipments. We got Illusionist, um, doubling up those tokens, and Swifties. I have become increasingly angered by Lightning Greaves, just because I probably lost two games in the last month or two because I couldn't target my own stuff. So I took it out of the deck. We got two Planeswalkers. We got Vra uh, Liliana Dreadhorde General and Vraska Golgari Queen. Vr Liliana is fantastic in this deck. Every time a creature dies, draw a card. And Vraska, you can sack stuff and draw cards. Take them some enchantments. We got Growing Delights of Iqlamok. This card's fantastic. It's like Tender Shoot, but as an enchantment. Vernet Embrace, it's gonna make a sapling token. Then we got the Ubiquitous Parallel, Primal, and Doubling Season, just give me more tokens. Clip the Lithrites, Second Harvest, all token thingies. Sapling Migration, making some saps. Four Swarm, make it some saps. Sprout Swarm, saps. Necrogenesis and Night Soil, clearing out graveyards, making saps. More draw cards, we got Village Rights, fantastic card. Sign of Blood, the only tutor of Diapolic Content, trying to make some saps, sack them to get that Wincom. Skull Clamp, 
Here come the spicy mustard cards. Keen Sense and Snake Umbra. Both of them read, when the enchanted creature deals damage, draw a card. Slimfoot deals damage. So if you deal, if you sack a creature, if you sack a sapperling, it deals one damage to each opponent. So you're gonna draw three cards. I was drawing 11 or 12 cards a turn with these three things the other day and it was fantastic. Read them bones and harmonize round out the draw package. Then we got boom, boom, alter, alter. You need them, you love them, you want them in this deck. You want to sap, sap those saps and make mayonnaise with them. Here come the rocks, talisman of endurance, fell war stone, thought vessel, soul ring, Golgari signet. Nothing crazy. If I had another mana crypt, I'd probably put it in there. Here come the boys, Finhorn Elves, some Southside Elves, Llanowar Elves, the OGs, Elves of Deep Shadow, and Birds. Then we got Fertile Ground and Utopia Sprawl. Underrated cards, I think Fertile Ground is a wildly underrated card. The card is fantastic. No one's gonna, do, no one's gonna blow this up. If they want, and then if they do, if they want to waste a removal spell on a fertile ground, be my guest. Then we got the ramps, Haro, cultivate, nature's lore, rampant growth, Kodama's reach, harvest season, and primal growth. Another card that should go in any token deck, just because. If you got saps, if you got a gob not goblins, well you guys can play red and green goblins. If you got anything that makes uh, tokens, put that in there, because you're gonna get more lands if you sack one of those tokens. And here comes the spice of the deck. We got Tainted Strike, Phyresis, Grafted Exoskeleton, and Triumph of the Horror. So you're gonna wanna put Infect on Footy. So let's say you put Tainted Strike on Footy. Then you have, let's say for instance, you got a altar out. Then let's say for instance, you got a doble or any of the doubling enchantments. You are gonna make a dude, sack him and repeat. You're gonna to wanna to deal 10 damage to each opponent and infect them to death. And that's what it is. It's a fun deck. I love playing it. I only bring it out once in a while. So I invest in all this money in it. And um, it is what it is. I love playing this deck when I know the table wants some heat. When the table is a spicy meatball. When we're sitting there at like that underground casino in the back of some Chinatown restaurant playing uh, Magic. Well, there we go, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think.